The global jobs crisis continues unabated into 2012. Global employment grew by 1.5% in 2011, barely enough to keep up with the global labor force growth. The frail recovery was not enough to provide additional opportunities for those 27 million job seekers who lost employment at the beginning of the crisis. The employment to population ratio has now settled on a lower path, declining from 61.2% in 2007 to 60.2% .2 in 2010. This represents the largest such decline on record. With the weak macroeconomic outlook, the ILO's baseline projection for employment is not encouraging, simply following labor force growth up to 2016. This means that the jobs gap that has been opened by the crisis will not be closed over the medium term. If matters turn out worse, then global labor markets would experience a double dip the employment to population ratio would fall further to the lowest rate on record by around 2013. Employment would continue to expand, but at a rate less than the global labor force, widening the jobs challenge considerably. But even an upside scenario would not result in growth rates sufficient to bring about a substantial rise in the global employment and the employment to population ratio would remain well below pre-crisis levels for the next several years. For employment to recover more forcefully, a strong push to investment is needed. Historically, investment has been strongly linked to employment growth. In the current situation, and in order to absorb the additional unemployment induced by the crisis, investment would actually need to increase by around 2 percentage points of global GDP, or around 1.2 trillion US dollars. In contrast, global investment actually fell and is recovering only gradually. The investment loss induced at the beginning of the crisis has not yet been recovered. Given the weak outlook and the risk of a global double dip as stimulus measures are waning, the global investment recovery may actually even be weaker, not returning anywhere uh, close to the pre-crisis levels. In contrast, for employment to recover, investment needs to reach levels above peak pre-crisis values. Partly, the slow investment recovery is due to tight financial market conditions, in particular in some advanced economies that restrict especially small and medium-sized enterprises in their plans to upgrade and expand capacities. In addition, Structural imbalances related to housing bubbles and a slowdown in productivity developments in several countries weigh on a more rapid reallocation of resources and a quicker recovery. These difficulties for investment to recover more strongly can be linked to long term trends of declining productivity growth rates, very pronounced in advanced economies but increasingly seen also in some emerging regions. As investors find it harder to find profitable opportunities to expand productive capacity, investment will recover only gradually, much less than what could be expected under higher productivity growth rates. Governments need now concentrate on removing these brakes on investors if employment is to recover more strongly. Key for this will be the policy action in three areas. First, global policy coordination needs to be improved to boost economic activity. Countries where fiscal space is still available should use it to support the real economy. In contrast, current austerity measures will, matter, will make matters worse, including for the sustainability of public finances. Only more growth can get us out of the current global anemic economic situation. Second, more substantial repair and regulation of the financial system would restore credibility and confidence, allowing banks to overcome the credit risk that has dodged this crisis. An encompassing reform of financial markets, including larger safety margins in the domestic banking sector, would substantially help the labor market and could add up to half a percentage points in global growth. Finally, 
governments need to target stimulus measures to employment for investment to have a large impact on job creation. Indeed, our analysis regarding different labor market instruments shows that both active and passive labor market policies have proven very effective in stimulating job creation and supporting incomes during the current crisis and need to be privileged on the way out of this crisis.